Hi, my name is Nancy Yi. I'm a research fellow at the New Age Skin Research Foundation. Today I'll be talking to Dr. Robert Eckerd about acne. Dr. Eckerd is certified in dermatology and is an associate at Advanced Dermatology. Dr. Eckerd is also a member of the American Society of Dermatologic Surgery. Hello, Dr. Eckerd. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Today we're going to talk about acne. Can you briefly explain what causes acne? Acne is essentially caused by hair follicles being blocked by buildup of skin, dead skin cells, which is essentially a genetic uh, trait. And then bacteria within the hair follicle causing inflammation, thinning of the uh, hair follicle wall, and sometimes rupture underneath the skin. And this explains uh, much of the range of different symptoms that one can see with acne. Thank you, Dr. Eckerd. There seems to be different forms of acne. Could you explain the different types of acne? The, the mildest form of acne tends to occur mostly as comedones, blackheads and whiteheads. Um, inflammatory spots uh, coming up, we, we begin to call uh, papulopustular acne and may take uh, different treatments than the comedonal form. Finally, there's a cystic acne where uh, there's a great deal of inflammation in the skin. Often this leads to scarring and, uh, and uh, large discolored spots. Um, does acne affect everyone the same way? Are there certain skin types that are more prone to getting acne? That's a great question. Uh, although the range of acne can be experienced by any individual, there are certain groups that may uh, experience, for example, cystic acne more. Uh, people of a Mediterranean heritage tend to have a, a slightly more uh, increased risk of the cystic form of acne. and. Uh, Individuals, though, can range from very mild to very severe and may move back and forth between those types as well. And each of them does require a slightly different approach to treatment. Um, does acne generally occur in adolescents? Everyone wishes that acne was just experienced between the ages of 15 and 18 and then you'd be over with it. And for a majority of people, that is probably uh, the age range that they have their acne outbreaks, but there's quite a few adults that experience acne uh, lifelong. Uh, approximately 5 to 10 percent of adults will have acne still occurring into their 40s. Uh, they may get a little bit of a break um, once menopause has occurred, but that's actually quite li late in life as well. And treatment in adults uh, needs to be tailored uh, differently to treatment in teenagers. There seems to be a lot of products out there to treat acne. Are there any effective treatments for acne? There's a range of treatments available from over-the-counter to prescription. Over-the-counter products have usually one of two active ingredients, either salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide. Salicylic acid can help to exfoliate the skin, open up some of those comedones, and benzoyl peroxide tends to be antibacterial and anti-inflammatory, addressing some of the uh, the P. acnes bacteria in the hair follicles. If these are not effective, and for many people they can give improvement, uh, prescription medication would need to be employed. My preference is a compound known as a retinol, which can be found in products like Retin-A, Tazerac, or Differin. These help to exfoliate the skin, they're anti-inflammatory, they are somewhat antibacterial, and they can also help to uh, strengthen the skin somewhat. Um, many people experience a little bit of irritation and peeling when they first start using them, but this is temporary and uh, it's, they are probably the single most effective topical agent that we can use. Topical antibiotics, benzoyl peroxides as well, sulfur products all have their place as well. And then there's a class of systemic agents, oral antibiotics or oral derivatives of the retinols. And these are for more advanced uh, acne, more inflammatory or even cystic acne. What other treatments or actions one could take to prevent an acne breakout before it starts? Good cleansing of the skin is where uh, most of this starts with a mild agent. Um, a non-soap uh, cleanser is always good. Uh, moisturizing the skin in many cases can help as well. And then regular use of uh, the agents recommended by your doctor, especially the retinols, can prevent outbreaks by keeping the skin uh, free of the blockages of the hair follicles and decreasing the inflammatory response to the bacteria in the hair follicles. The, I get this question all the time about food in particular. Can I eat chocolate? Can I eat greasy food? Um, 
as well as other questions about uh, can I go tanning to, to fix my acne. Let's talk about food briefly. Food is very difficult to prove any kind of causal link with acne. If you're a person who experiences a breakout after you eat chocolate, then by all means avoid chocolate, but there's never been a study that's proved that in a population uh, the use of chocolate or greasy foods can make a big difference in acne. There's some very interesting research that's come out in the last year or so showing that low glycemic index diets may reduce acne, but it's unclear from those studies whether the effect is from the food itself or just from weight loss experienced by the participants. Sunlight in some individuals will help to uh, decrease some of the inflammatory symptoms of acne, some of the red uh, spots. But in other individuals may actually flare acne. And in any case, we do know that it leads to uh, sunburns, aging of the skin, and skin cancer. So I don't tend to advocate this as a treatment for acne in my patients. Sometimes one's acne could clear up, but they're still left with scars. What can be done to prevent acne scarring? Now often people will have some discoloration, some brown spots or pink spots that are left behind as the acne fades. And they think of this as scarring, but this is really a temporary uh, condition. Many of the acne medicines that we use will help to speed up the resolution of these discolored spots. Uh, but as I say, treatment, effective treatment is really the most important thing to prevent scarring. If you're left with residual scars, what could be done to lessen or erase the effects of acne scarring? There's a whole range of treatments for scarring of the skin. Uh, specifically, acne scarring can be difficult because it's often small, uh, deep crater-like scars and uh, some of the gentler methods of microdermabrasion and so forth may not be sufficient. Chemical peels can help. Uh, topical retinols, as we talked about before, induce new collagen growth and that can help to soften scars. And for those cases that don't respond to either of these uh, less approaches, uh, resurfacing with a laser can be very effective, uh, essentially erasing even deep acne scars. There is some associated downtime, but the results are very satisfactory in many people. Uh, lasers such as the Pixel uh, CO2 laser, uh, Fraxel laser, or the Smooth Beam laser are all lasers that I employ regularly for softening or erasing acne scarring. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me.